Today we're covering Timer UI in Unity. This can be a basic countdown timer where you display a value as it approaches zero. This is slightly different than a cooldown timer, which I'll do in a separate video. The meat of this basic mechanic is two things. One, keeping track of a time remaining, and I'll show you how to start the time independently, as this is more flexible and you can decide to start the timer as soon as the scene loads or some other arbitrary moment. And then two, displaying the time value. If you haven't watched my previous video on displaying a value with UI, I'll have it linked right now, and also in the description below. Again, I'll have the script used in this video linked. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Now, let's get into it. Let's say that we have a scene where we have some UI, and we wanna be able to display the value of a countdown timer, maybe in this spot. I've just created an empty object called capital T timer. And I have a blank script called lowercase t timer here. Let's just load that up. There's nothing on there right now. Let's work through the things that we need to know and what Unity needs to know to make this all happen. Number one, we want to have a start time value. Let's say that if the timer wants to start at 30, then that would be that value that we're talking about. And we're going to call this a serialized field and it's going to be a type float and it's going to be our start time. From there we should have something called our current time. At any given time if the timer is running or not we're going to refer to this as our current time and so this is going to be a, another float and it's going to be current time. Next thing that we need to know is whether or not the timer has started. And this is going to be a boolean called uh, timer started. And by default, it should be false. From there, um, we, we're just going to have some logic that's going to say um, whether or not the time current time reached 0. And if so, then we want to do something. right? And this is going to fit somewhere else. This is going to go down into update. So at start, what we're going to do is our current time, right when the scene loads or when the script enters the scene, current time should be set to our start time. Right. So uh, if we decide that it should start at 3, then the start time should update the current time to be 3. For the sake of this video, again, we're going to start at 3 just so that we're not counting down from 30 to see if this thing works. From there, we're just going to set an arbitrary conditional to say that we're going to trigger this start time. And you can link this to a button later if you want to. So I'm going to say if input dot get key down. And we're just going to check for a certain key at this moment. And I'm just going to link it to the letter A. When I press A, I'm going to start this timer. So when I press A, I want to set the timer started to be true. Otherwise, the timer doesn't start on its own. Secondly, if timer started, then we want to start scraping some time off from our current time. And it should look something like this. Current time should equal um, current time minus just a little bit of time that has passed between frames. And just using some real world numbers, Let's say that we start out with three seconds, and then the, the time between a frame was actually one second. Then we would end up having a current time of two seconds. And then the next frame, we're going to have two seconds minus another one second, and then we're going to be approaching one second here. So forth as we move towards zero. I hope that makes sense. And we can shorten this code so that it looks like minus equals current time. That's the same thing as we the previous line there. So we're going to be subtracting the previous duration, previous uh, frames duration. Again, this is a minuscule value. Great. And then we're going to say that we're going to have this logic. What happens when we reach that certain value, right? Um, and we can do this outside of here. Uh, or in here, that's fine. We'll just do it in here. So that logic is if 
our current time is equal or less than less than or equal to zero, we want to do something. And in that case is if we've reached zero, then we want to number one stop the the timer. I'm going to say this is false. And then we just want to set our current time to be zero. When we're subtracting a number, we could end up with a negative number depending on the frame size. And we just want to set it to zero because we're going to be showing this number up in the UI. And let's just write a little bit of de debug just to check to see if this thing works. Let's say that timer reached zero. So if we type this all correctly, and the logic makes sense, um, we should see in our console that that message timer reached zero if, if and when that value reaches zero. So I hit save, I'm gonna jump back here and clear out this console. Unity's being real slow. We're gonna set our start time to be a value of three seconds. You can change it to whatever you want, but for testing purposes, there's no reason to be anything greater than three. And I'm gonna hit play. We should know that that counter doesn't start because we set that it doesn't start until we hit the letter A. So let's come back into Unity. We're still in play, I'm gonna hit A. And in three seconds, two, one, we should see timer reach zero, great. So we know that our timer is working. So what we wanna do now is we wanna take that value, whatever that current time is, and display it on our UI. So let's go into Unity and let's create a, create a spot, a text element that's gonna take that number value. I already have a canvas set up and I have a panel and I have some text that shows up here. If I double click on it, it's gonna zoom over here. This is my keys value. And I'm gonna make another text mesh pro object that's gonna be the, the landing spot for our timer. I'm gonna to go to create UI text mesh pro and I'm gonna name it um, timer text. Make sure that it's a child of the panel. And I'm gonna drag it so that it sits over here like this. I'm gonna mimic what the text looks like. I'm gonna say that it's gonna be timer or time colon, and then ideally some number of digits, something like that. I'm gonna resize this or set it to auto size so that the, the text fits the frame that I supply it. Let's move this around for a second. Um, that looks pretty good. I can resize this portion, something like that. Hopefully my number does not get bigger than that. Cool, so now we have a home for our text. We're gonna go back to our code because this code doesn't know where the text element is. You're right. So we're gonna go back into our code and we need to set some things up. I'm using Text Mesh Pro and you can use regular text object if you want, um, but the namespaces are different. If you're using regular text, then you're gonna use Unity Engine dot UI. But in my case, I'm going to be using Text Mesh Pro, so I need to use TM Pro namespace. From there, I need to have a reference variable for my text element, and so it needs to be a TM Pro underscore capital T text, and I'm going to call this timer text. Now I have a variable uh, ref var for my text. UI text, TM Pro text component. And I'm going to set it as a serialized field. That way I don't need to find that component somehow. I'm just going to use my inspector to drag in that object. From here, I'm going to copy that reference and Whenever this timer has started, then I want to update the text field of that text object. Um, I'm not going to finish that line for a second. I'm going to come back here. We know that we have this text mesh pro object, and there's many different components to it. The font asset, the font style, size, color, and this is relating to the text parameter. And so we want to make sure that we're addressing the text parameter here. When we say dot text, that's the text little window that we normally would type into. And whatever we feed in here 
is going to be the thing that shows up. But in this case, it doesn't want to be the gobbledygook. We want to have the current time dot to string. The reason that we're using to string is we know that this current time value is a data type of float. And the text element wants to take a string. You can see that me hovering over that text parameter, it says string in the little um, tooltip. And so we need to recast it back to a string. From there, um, we should be good to go, although we might do some formatting in a second. Let's try that now. Let's go back to our timer. And we have this empty field, which is the text timer code looking for a text object that we haven't linked yet. We need to drag in our timer text. And now the code knows where to send that value. Let's go ahead and hit play. And we should see um, this timer be represented as 000. And as soon as I hit A, then that number comes down. And there's a, a lot of digits that show there. And then when it finally reaches zero, it goes back to zero. So we need to do a couple of things. We need to make sure that we are, we want to update that text value as soon as we enter the scene with the starting time value. So we're just going to steal this line of code here. I'm going to plug that in there. We want to make sure this says timer text so that as soon as the scene loads, we have that value three, or it could be 10 or 30, whatever you set that as. From there, we, we had so many digits behind the decimal point, and it's going to be up to you whatever you wanted to show. But if we, we can format that text, something like this, and if I hit F2 in quotes, then this is going to show the value, that float value as a string, but constrain it to two points behind the fixed decimal point. We're going to start at three, hit A. Since we hit F2, then it sets it as two floating points behind the decimal. We could change it to one if we wanted to, and that's up to you. So if we change this to F1, then we know that the, the text is going to be reformatted when it's changed from a number value to a string by only showing one value behind the decimal point. Let's try that one more time. Let's hit A. There you are, there's the timer. One last thing is that if you want that timer to automatically start, then we don't need to wait for this button press to start. We can just copy this line to start this timer as soon as the, the um, script enters the scene and we can call that timer started true. Let's just try that, let's hit save. Go back into Unity, we'll hit play. And we should automatically see that timer start as soon as everything loads. There it is. Last thing that you need to do is just going to be up to you what, what you want to do when that timer runs out. Right now, we're just showing this debug.log timer reached zero. You probably are going to call a different function, maybe bring up a you died screen or something like that. Um, but that's totally up to you. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to link all the information that we used here in the description below. Thanks.